little cotton bowl and we are ready to get started. So what? here's what's gonna happen first. It's gonna be super cute. We're gonna use some Starfire glass. Thank you, Sherry. And we're gonna use some seed beads too and do a little painting as well. So before we get started on tracing, we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of background. And I actually chose kind of a smoky blue for my background because it'll also help when we start to paint. Thank you, Terry. Uh, when we start to paint, it'll help with the shading on the cotton bowls. It'll kind of give us pre pre shading before we even get started. Thank you, Cheryl. My goodness, stars are out tonight. So I'm, this is a new bottle, so I'm trying to get this open real quick. So, um, I was trying to think what else is new, what's new been happening. So Steve's dad had some, um, a procedure done yesterday. I'd ask everybody who's the praying kind to say a little prayer for him and the doctor and everything turned out wonderfully. He is home and everything is good. So thank you guys for that. All right, so here's what we're using. Thank you, Kathy. It is called Winter Blue, and it's kind of a smoky blue. So I'm going to get a little bit. I'm actually just going to squirt it out on my canvas for um, because I don't have a plate here for some reason. I need to grab a plate. I usually use a little plate for my... Um, yeah, that's what I did, Barbara. Well, I did, I started doing that and then it felt like it was going to break. So then I, I just, uh, peeled off the plastic, but normally that's what I do. But sometimes when you do that, they want to break on you. So I got a little bit of that blue on here and now I'm going to squirt a little bit of white off in this corner and that's probably too much. Thank you for the sprinkles just to give it a little interest. And, cause you know, I don't like one flat color. We gotta kinda give it some dimension. So I'm gonna offload some of that because I got way too much on my canvas. I don't have plates, sister. I'm gonna use a piece of paper. Just offload some of that. All right, I keep freezing up, y'all. Y'all, soon, I promise soon, I am going to have better interweb. I'm just waiting with bated breath. So, a little, just a little bit of a smoky blue and white. Hello, Tina. A little bit of smoky blue and white um, background color. We're gonna get that dry so that we can trace our cotton ball. Having trouble talking again today. Thank you for the sprinkles, guys. Appreciate you. Hey, Maureen. It won't take but a second to get this dry. Hey, Carol. Thank you. Hope everything's good for you, too. I don't know if they're not under here, Kristen. I think they're probably over at where the flowers are. So I'm gonna go grab it real quick. Hey, Jerry, how are ya? All right, let me turn that off. We'll let that cool off one second while I grab a plate. Oh yeah. Here they are in all their glory. This one's pretty dirty, but you'll be able to tell what color I've been painting with recently, and it is pink. <laughs> Hello, hot and humid Alabama. It is no better here, honey. It is hot and humid here as well. Okay, so here is my cotton bowl, and that was still a little warm. You can tell when your canvas is warm. If you lay your tracing paper down and it starts to curl, that means it's a little warm. So, hey, Louise. Hey, y'all. Thanks for being here on this Wednesday. So, I kind of made myself a cotton ball with a little crazy stem that's going to kind of go off. Uh, the edge. So I'm going to grab some tape. I'm going to just book that edge. 
look at it curling. I'm gonna grab a little tape and I'm just going to book that edge with my tape so it doesn't move while, well, I didn't do a very good job there, but that's all right. So it doesn't move while we are tracing our image on. So now I'm gonna grab me a stylus and my graphite paper. Tornado watch, oh my gosh, we had terrible storms yesterday. I was just sitting there, kind of working, doing some um, just checkup work, just planning and stuff. And it started getting really dark in my house and I thought, what in the world is happening? And then the wind started blowing. Things started like hitting the windows and I thought, Lord, it's gonna throw in potted plants right into my window. We had maybe for 45 minutes or so, some really nasty wind and thunder. And then it just rained a little bit and then went away. So there's my little stem, a little cotton stem. So I'm gonna make very light marks for my bowl because I kind of want to freehand that a little and let it kind of go where it wants to go. Just want to kind of give myself, well, I did that pretty heavy. Just wanted to give myself a little bit of outline, but we're going to work with what we got going on here. All right, so let me go ahead and take this tape off. Otherwise, the longer I leave it on here, the harder it is to get off sometimes. And I got to make a little tracer in the morning for my girls. All right, so get that over there. All right, so the first thing I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and give the white parts of my cotton bowl a little color, a little white. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my plate. Thank you for the sprinkles, ladies. And I'm gonna get a little bit of a smaller brush. You can, look, y'all, I ruined this one. This one's hard as a brick. I'm so terrible at that. Yes, Elaine, thank you. He is doing well. We're all very happy for that. So I'm gonna just come in and where my cotton bowl is, and I'm gonna try to cover up a little bit of that tracer line, but I do want it to be flowy. I don't want like this. I don't want this hard, solid line. I want it to be kind of just loose and flowy and muted around the edge. And we're gonna come back behind this stem a little. I'm gonna go outside my lines just so I can have that looseness. All right, so we're gonna hit that edge. And I'm gonna hit this edge. We're gonna come behind my stem here. And then we'll fill that in. I'm gonna kinda, kinda try to stay in the bowl shape. I know, um, sounds like I'm saying bowl. And I'm saying bowl, <laughs> I guess they're pronounced the same. I'm just being sassy, just being a little mouthy. All right, I'm gonna kind of keep that in a circle as much as possible. And we'll come back up here and just loosely And then this one's kind of hiding behind one, so we'll just kind of give her that. I'm gonna have to sneak in here and get between that little part. Who knows what the parts are called? So is that the shell that breaks open? This little part here is like, the shell that breaks open and burst forth with the cotton. I don't know. I don't know what the parts are. All right, so while that sets up a bit, 
We're going to go ahead and work on the shell. The pod. Thank you, Jesse. I knew one of you guys would know. <laughs> I knew somebody would know. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use a couple of colors for this. I'm just going to kind of intermix them. Um, and so I'm going to use a little bit of raw umber, which is a just a chocolatey brown. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of that. Don't need much. And I got to get the dried paint off the edge. So just a little bit. We might not have any. A little bit of the umber. Let me see if you can see that. And I have olive green, which is kind of a dark mossy green. Me either, Amber. And I live in Mississippi. Shame on me. Let me see if I can get some of this color out. I picked up, obviously I picked up colors I don't have a lot of. They're all kind of icky. Thingamajiggy, that's right. Lucky I don't need much of that. And I got this color. Oh, that was olive green, and this is called Spanish olive. Thank you, Amy. And we're just gonna squirt a little bit of that out as well. Look at me, heavens, I'm on a roll today. All the colors I picked are icky. Ugh, that's completely stopped up. Let's take a peek. Look at that. It's got a plug in it, y'all. Is that not hilarious? Let's see, probably because I left the top open. Let's see if we can unplug it. Look at there. Unplugged and paint on the palette. I probably left the top open and thank you, Amber. And it created that dried up plug. So do y'all do that too or am I the only one? Okay, so I, I think I'm gonna start with the lightest color and we're just going to mix and blend and see what happens. I don't 1000% know exactly what it should look like, so we are just going, we're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna start with my little stem and a little bit of this, I'm gonna put a little bit of white in here, a little bit of this uh, lighter green. That's a, a green I forced out that is kind of icky. So let's just paint our stem. And we'll put a little green in the hole or the whatever we called it as well. Every time I paint with y'all, it's like I learn something. Because I'm just over here going, I don't know what this is really called. Wheat corn canola. So I'm just going to add some green to the center. Got to wet that a little. It's kind of dry and blumpy. I'm going to add a little bit of green just along each one just to get some color in there. And we'll rinse that off and we'll start with another color. Oh, that amber, that is fine, honey. I appreciate every single one. Thank you, Charlotte. So now I'm gonna just go into this darker green, which was the olive green. We're gonna just add a little bit of that as well. And then we're gonna go over it with the brown. I like intermixing these colors because it kind of gives it to me a little more authentic look because nothing is one just solid color, is it? Everything is multitudes of color. So just bring in a little bit of that darker green here and there. Just don't even think about it. Just be a little messy and just let it flow. And, all right, now we're going for the brown. 
All right, so this is the raw umber. I'm just gonna get it on my brush, kind of saturate a little, and I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna try not to get my hands in that wet paint. A little too much water. And we're just gonna come in and right over the top of all this other color, we'll blend in some of that umber. Don't try to make perfect lines either. If you've ever seen a busted open cotton bowl, you know that that shell, that, that hull, is very jagged and irregular. So don't try to make everything perfect. Be loose and fluid and kind of let it do what it's gonna do. Here, we'll grab up a little more of that lighter green. So this layering these colors and kind of being wet on wet as well, kind of makes it look a little more authentic to me, anyway. Yes, yeah, six by six. So let's come over here and get this side. Just blend in, that side's a little dry, so I might bring in a little more green too. Running out of brown. And then, you know I gotta throw some white in here, right? I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white onto my brush, kind of blend it in, dirty it up a little, and we're just come along, hang on, and just add little bits right along one edge or two, just to give it a little more dimension. So I'm just gonna come right kinda on the left side. Voila, look at that, check it. Not bad. Oh, isn't that cute? Pretty good. And that's why I mix colors like that. It just to me looks more dimensional and um, more accurate, I guess, when you just kind of blend your colors together. I had a little paint boo boo there, so we're going to fix that up. Just kind of be messy. Yes, it was uh, Spanish olive. This is a Craft Smart color. I think that is Michael's. And then we had olive green, which is folk arts, and raw umber and white. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back with my white. Let me grab my other brush again. And I am going to just come in and kind of fill in. I'm not gonna do 100% coverage. I want it to have some highs and lows with the white. So I'm gonna hit the high spots and I'm gonna kind of not get all the way up next to the bowl because that's gonna kind of create a little shadow effect right up next to the um, little shell hole shape things. <laughs> whatever. So uh, I'm just going to kind of come in and we're going to put glass on here too. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to start up here. Let's make a little circular. We may add a little bit of shading. We'll see what it looks like when When we're done, I'm gonna turn it this way. We'll get down in, I'm gonna try not to get my hand in there. Down under here. I'm digging it, digging it. And I actually think what I'm gonna do, 
I'm just going to go outside the line and just give it a little bit, break up that hard line a little. All right. So now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that blue that we used on the background, just that uh, winter blue. And while my brush, oh, I stuck my finger right in there. While my brush is still wet with the white, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put just a little bit of that winter blue on the corner of my paintbrush. I'll come over here and blend it a little. And I am going to give a little bit of shading. I'm gonna have to do that the right way. I was trying to cheat and not put it on my plates, but we're gonna have to do it right. So let me squirt a little out. I'm gonna get a little bit on the corner of my brush and I'm gonna go back and forth on my plate to kind of blend that in. And then on the outside of this circle, okay? So this left side is kind of a circle. On the outside edge of that circle, I'm gonna add a little bit of that background color in a couple places to kind of shadow that and give that cotton bowl a little definition. Kind of see how I did that? I went on the outside edge and just gave it a little bit of definition. All right, so we'll do it again. I'm gonna get a little bit on the edge, go back and forth. And same thing here. I'm just gonna bring that same color around a little don't make your line really harsh. You want it to be kind of faint. And so you can see I created another little bowl effect here, and now we'll create one there. Thank you, Jody. So again, I'm gonna get a little bit of blue on the corner. I'm gonna go back and forth. You always want your brush when you're doing this kind of shading to have some moisture in it, all right? So um, I'm gonna just come up around and just form a very slight, indistinct shadow for that one. So you can kind of see, hang on. I'm gonna bring that one around, around. You can kind of start to see the sections of the balls. Look good? I think it looks great. You know what? And I, I think I'm done painting. That was the fastest. Thanks, Mom. That was the fastest paint job in history. But before we finish, I'm gonna grab my pen. Y'all know I love this. Actually, I, what I'm gonna do is take my heat gun Let's dry this paint. Let's get her dry. Great. Awesome. Let that cool for a second. That heated up pretty good. So just as nor just like normally, I'm going to use my Master's Touch Graphic Pen for a little bitty details. Uh, if you're new here, this pen comes from Hobby Lobby. Master's Touch is the brand, and it's called a Graphic Illustration Marker. And this it, this one's a three, a point three. Uh, I normally use a five, uh, but this is the one I picked up, so I'm going with it. And I use this for tiny little details because I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands and it's really hard for me to make really fine details. So I'm just gonna use my pen. This is my cheat pen. And I like to just do short strokes and outline my art. And I do short, quick, loosey-goosey, not trying to be perfect little strokes in the sections and to give it a little extra something. So I'm gonna show you that close up so you can kind of see the little bit of lines that I've made for in the uh, whole part and the stem. 
So I don't want to do a lot on the cotton bowls because I want them to stay kind of the way they are, but I am going to just add a tiny bit. And I'm barely touching my canvas. I really want it not to be fully outlined. So let me show you that close up. I love this pen. And if you're really light handed with it, yeah, I had to get a different brand to get a really good price on it. Uh, it's still a graphic marker. It's just what um, it's just whatever they wrote on it. So you can see how I just barely outlined uh, that cotton. All right. So here's what we're going to do next. We are going to add some Starfire. I brought Starfire, and I have some of the seed beads also from Hobby Lobby. These are the Crystal Luster Clear Seed Beads. And we're gonna mix some resin as well. So I'm actually going to, I think, I'm gonna go ahead and just add some of this glass to my cotton bowl. Yeah, I couldn't get a mass quantity of those pens from Hobby Lobby. Um, so I found another vendor and, you know, it's really the same pen. It's just got a, they, you know how it is. Everybody just calls it something different. So I'm gonna add in some glass. I'm just gonna pour some glass on here and then I'll piddle with it. So let's just get some on and then we can arrange and piddle. We'll get some in the center. We'll make sure we don't cover up our hole. And I'm gonna kind of stack it up a little high so it has that, um, kind of rounded, curved top look. So it looks really good and dimensional. And let's get those tucked in and around. I think I need just a few more little nugs. Just a few. All right, let's get a few more. Yeah, Hobby Lobby's pretty proud of those pins, but I did find another vendor and I bought a couple of samples before I bought a bunch for my kit box and tested it out. So I knew it was gonna work and be, whoa, almost fell out of my chair, y'all. <laughs> I knew it was gonna work and be a nice pen. So I would never give y'all some garbage. So I'm gonna put a couple pieces where I think I need them and then I'm gonna build up a little height. A little bit of height. All right, so we're gonna put a little height here on this one. And then we'll put a little height here on this one. And we'll make sure everything stays in place. Okay, I might add a little more but I think I wanna get my resin on because I do wanna add a little bit of height, but it's just gonna to continue to kind of fall off. So if I put my resin on, I can add a little bit more and then it won't wiggle around. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna make, I'm trying to decide, I think I'm gonna make one out. So I'm gonna do a half and a half. You find my pen again. I'm gonna do a half an ounce of hardener and a half an ounce of resin right in that cup. Let me put my gloves on. Now I managed to salvage these gloves. These have been, this is my third art piece with these gloves, which is a miracle. 
And I feel, I feel a little crunchy something in the fingertip there too, but we're gonna just keep on keeping on. We're gonna pretend it's not happening. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scooch this up just a little, and I'm gonna put half, this is probably way more than I need, but we're gonna go for it. A half an ounce of hardener in my little cup. Half an ounce, whoa, half an ounce of hardener. And that's right, thank you, Catherine. And we're gonna do a half ounce of the resin. Hey, Tootsie. And then we're gonna mix. Don't let me over pour, I'm feeling a little heavy handed today. Whoop, 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 whoop. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, so let's get a mix in. And we're gonna stir for three minutes. Kimberly said hydrangea. I've gotten a lot of compliments on my hydrangea you did and gifted me. Oh, that's awesome, I'm so happy. I love that hydrangea. I wanna do some more. I don't wanna bore y'all though. I like to do different things. We're gonna do this for three minutes. Just mix slowly and get this all mixed up. So yeah, I don't wanna do the same thing over and over and over. It's hard to sometimes come up with things to do. I did, I was gonna do an ice cream cone today, so be looking for that next week. Um, Cause I had, to, I had to take care of mama, didn't I? And she ain't even here. Not even watching. The nerve, the nerve, I tell ya. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I've done lilies, but oh, I've been doing this so long, I don't even remember what I've done or not. I may, I feel like I've done lilies. I'll have to look. I love the hydrangeas too. I still have the stencil laying on my art desk because I keep feeling like I need to do another one. So, I always take care of mama, that's right. What mama wants, mama gets. Now remember guys, when you're stirring your resin, you don't wanna whip it to death, okay? You wanna stir softly and gently. The goal is just to intermix those two parts together, not beat it to death, because the more you whip it, the more air you're incorporating into this, and it's hard to get rid of those bubbles if you just beat a bunch of bubbles into it. So, oh, Amy, that's hilarious. That would be kind of cute, wouldn't it? Maybe for fall, maybe towards the fall we'll start that. So we're just gonna stir nice and gentle. Get her mixed. You don't wanna not mix it. If it's not mixed well, it will never dry. So if you mix your resin and you pour it on your cute little art piece and the next day you come in and it's still sticky, one of two things has happened. You have either not mixed your resin thoroughly um, and sometimes that happens if you don't scrape the sides so you'll have a little bit of maybe, you know, resin on your sides that didn't get mixed with hardener, and that will keep it from hardening. And the other one is if you did not measure appropriately, so. Oh no, Barbara. The weather is insane. I don't even know what to think about the weather around here these days. Right. Tom, Catherine says, Tom. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get some resin on here and then we'll take a peek at it. I may add a little more glass to the top once we get the resin on this bottom layer. Really wanna make sure it's covered nicely and that it stays put. So I'm gonna start with my glass. We're gonna get all this glass covered really well. 
especially. And sometimes, guys, if you are doing, if you want your glass super thick, you want to have a good bit of glass, you know, build up um, kind of high, uh, doing the resin in a little bit of a layer will help with that. Uh, even if you have to resin it, let it dry, and then add more and uh, add more resin to a second layer. Because sometimes if we add a lot of glass on that first layer, it, the resin has a hard time getting through all the way to the bottom layers of glass. So then you end up with rattles. You know, you have a little bit of rattling glass loose underneath the shell of your resin, or it doesn't clear out where, um, like for this, if I had too much and you, um, and I just poured resin over the top and there was still untouched glass, unresined glass underneath, it would cause you not to be able to see through that glass to the base of the canvas. So, that's happened to me before too. So, it's like I lost my whole art all the prettiness of the painting because I added way too much glass and there was no way for the resin to get to it to kind of clear it out and make it translucent. All right, so uh, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull the resin out to the edges so I can make sure I have enough to complete and then we'll add more glass for sure want some dimension. Let's put a little bit here. See if I keep, if I use my stick instead of my hands, I'll be able to have these gloves one more time. Maybe two, who knows? All right, we're just gonna keep spreading it out. A little bit more. All right. Now, my hands are still nice and clean, so I'm gonna add a little more. Thank you, Jesse. I like to try to teach when something, you know, sometimes things just pop in my head. I'm like, oh, I need to tell y'all that. I don't keep secrets. All right, that is much better. I do got some loosey-goosey ones we're gonna have to get under control, but I do like this better. Let me grab my little bead stick and we'll get these loose, the ones that have gone rogue. We'll get them tucked up here, boom, flip you up. Let's get them in. We'll get this one over here. So I've given that a lot of depth and when we're done, I will, uh, when I flip the camera, I'll kind of give you a bird's eye view or a, a kind of a side view to see, I want that flipped over, what, um, how deep it is, how much glass I've put on here because it's pretty, all right, I think I want a few more pieces. I'm gonna have to dump this out and just add them by hand. We'll just add a few pieces here and there. Kind of place them. So it really gives them a dimensional ball look, like it's actually round. Just a few more. Just a few more. All right. I think I'm good. So now I'm just gonna take that extra bit of resin and I'm gonna drizzle. Okay, we're gonna start left to right so that we make sure we've covered everything. And I'm just gonna lightly drizzle right back over every bit of this because I don't know where my glass is and isn't at this point. So I'm gonna start on one side and hit every bit of this piece again. That way, nothing falls off tomorrow. So to do this, you need to start on the left, 
go left to right, top to bottom, so that you don't miss anything because it's super hard to tell at this point what has top resin and what doesn't. So I'm gonna get all of this out. We're gonna make sure it's done. Come on, man. Those little grooves in that cup are so annoying. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of look at it. I got probably just a tiny smidge left. So I'm just gonna kind of look at it, twist and turn, see if anything catches my eye. Hey, you, back over there. And I think we're good, but I have just a smidge left, so we're gonna use it. And I'm just gonna drizzle it wherever need be. All right, top da. Cool, all right, I got a little bit of a mess here. I don't wanna get my hands in. I'm gonna wipe that up. And now I'm gonna hit this with my with my heat gun really quick. So I'm gonna hit it with the heat just to pop any bubbles. Oh, is mama here? <laughs> well, what do you think, mother? I'm gonna turn this up just a little. What I'm going to do is put a little frost on this cotton. <laughs> so I got these seed beads. These are bead treasure uh, seed beads from Hobby Lobby, and they are size 12 0, and it's called Crystal Luster. They're really sheer, uh, translucent, but they do give it a little sparkle. So I'm just going to add. And I'm gonna go high so that they'll bounce around the rest of the canvas as well. So we're kind of gonna just bounce and go where they want. Whoops. Voila, I think we're good. Look at that. I'm gonna take these off, make sure I don't have any ick. I'm gonna go around the edge a little. That's where my thing goes. And look, guys, no bubbles. Look how cute. I'm gonna raise up this camera in just a second and show you how thick the glass is. That's pretty cute, y'all. All right, let's raise it up. Yay, mom said awesome. I do have a little dot.